Chords and coffee number 26. Take you a quick drink. I'm drinking water today. I need to drink more water. You probably do too. Hey, you remember back episode number six, we talked about these intervals right here. And we talked about it as it relates to an A7. If you haven't watched that episode, and if you're interested, you ought to just pause this real quick, go back, get you a quick refresher of that, because it'll help you for what we're going to talk about right now, which is combining that kind of idea with some of this pentatonic stuff that we've been talking about. Sometimes you're playing a song, and I've frequently encountered this, especially when I'm playing on a Sunday morning, and it's a uh, real well-established song with the church band. In fact, it's probably an old hymn that may have been kind of... Um, you know, uh, doctored up a little bit to be a little more contemporary, so to speak. And uh, we're kind of coming up with an arrangement, sometimes on the spot. And you need some, uh, some tools in the tool belt or some spices in the cupboard, using these cooking metaphors that we so often love here on Chords and Coffee. You need a few spices to come along and, and just throw a little bit of garnish, a little bit of seasoning, and something that for the most part is pretty well done, you know what I mean? And so I wanted to show you these. It's also good for situations where uh, you're playing and you're you know, either improvising or maybe sometimes you got to come up with a solo and you need to play the melody, but you want to play it in a harmonized kind of way. So I'll tell you what we're going to do is I'm going to show you these intervals again. And uh, let's just, we're in the key of D. Let's just stay right there. Um, well, just then, that thing is actually over an A7. So why don't we just stay in A just for fun. And what we're gonna do is, we're looking at two shapes. Um, we're looking at, we're gonna call this shape number one. And so this is on the fifth fret of the high E string, right? And then we're gonna skip the B and then we're gonna play the G on the sixth fret, right? So that's like an A major sound. You hear the A and the C sharp right there, right? The next one is right here, both on the seventh fret. And we're gonna stay on the G and the B string through this thing. So A and C sharp, there is B and D, and then C sharp and E, right? Sort of brown eyed girl, right? Or the entertainer. Right, you heard that before. It, there's a reason why this is nice and it works, and because it sounds good, it's, it's friendly to our ears. So the next one, when you, when you come up here, you're right back to that first shape you did, but now we're up here on the 10th and the 11th fret. So 10th of the high E, 11th of the G. And then the next one is this exact same deal, just slid up a whole step. So E and G sharp, so 12th fret and 13th fret, 12th of the high E, 13th of the G. And then 14 and 14. And then uh, 16 and 16. And then lastly, where we started down here. And that's going to be 17 and 18 on the high E and the G, right? Well, that's great, but we can't just stay right there, right? We need something else. Well, what you're going to end up doing is basically doing that exact same thing again. But this time, let's start right here. And let's just go backwards. So we've got this guy. Slid a whole step back. So 14 and 14. And this time we're on the B string and the D string. Now slide back to the uh, 12 and 12. Right? And then now this should look familiar because it's the same thing as this. So you've got 10 on the B string, skipping the G, and then down to the D. We're on the 11th fret. Right? And then... 9 and 9 on the uh, B and the D string again, and then 7 and 7, right? And then, uh, think about that, yeah, <laughs> and then 5 and 6, 3 and 4, and then 2 and 2. So, Nate, why are you showing me that? I'm here to drink coffee with you and talk about chords. Don't be wasting my time. Well, I'm not, friend. Here's why. Because those little things right there... 
there's a lot of really cool improvisational uh, insta riffs or instant ways to make something pretty. I had a guitar teacher when I was in Michigan, and John, I don't know if you ever watched these videos, but if you do, I hope you randomly stumbled on this. John Reamer, um, by far and away one of the best guitar teachers I've ever had in my life. And uh, he was a mentor, really. And um, he uh, he told me one time we were working on something. And as a young man, I was very interested in fast, shreddy, oodly, oodly things. And he looked at me one day, and I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said something to the fact of, hey, listen, if you can't play over a ballad, in fact, I think he said, if you can't ballad, who cares about the rest of that stuff? Because... Um, there will always be somebody that can impress the audience better than you can and, you know, vice versa. But making an emotional connection is um, so much more profound. And that isn't to say that playing fast doesn't have some sort of, um, you know, um, emotional connectivity to it. But there is something about being able to play beautifully slowly intentionally and into um it doesn't always have to be sad either it could be poignant it could be inspirational sounds like my clothes are done uh so anyway i guess we're full circle at this point moving on all right <laughs> so let's find a backing track here and uh let's find one in um let's find one in well let's just find one in a so i'm going to type in backing track key of A, and I'm going to search. So there's a 335 right there in Blueberry Bursts. My buddy Brent Moore's got one of them. And um, let's just do that and see what that sounds like. It's way through a commercial. And so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this, and I'm going to try to apply um, what I just showed you, I'm try to find an instant melody with those intervals there. And I wanna hopefully demonstrate how powerful of a tool that is, because sometimes, you know, there's not a guitar solo. Sometimes when you're playing in a group or you're playing on a Sunday morning or you're writing a song, you know, you might just need to come up with some counterparts. So this is just a pretty straight ahead, not super complicated key of A kind of thing. I'm just gonna noodle around with these little things I just showed you. ups in there but I think you get the idea just then I landed on a couple things the first one was this and when I'm when I'm playing this I'm playing I'm, I'm picking with this and then I'm plucking with this guy here and just then I'm doing this sort of I'm thinking of this as like an E shape and I'm playing from here so from uh, 12 and 13 uh, on the High E is 12, and G is 13, and then up to the 14 and 14 on the same two strings. And then back to where I was, done. And then with these two fingers, I'm landing on the 14th fret of the D and the B. And then 
I ended up doing this little. Um, kind of idea, same sort of deal, but this time I'm playing here on the fifth fret and the sixth fret of the E and the G, and then I'm plucking on the fourth fret and I'm just barring across there. So what I would do is find, you can go find that track that we just did with that little Blueberry Burst 335 on it, and just play around with these find you like maybe even like three or four of them find a repeating pattern and you'd be surprised I mean I'm showing you all my best tricks okay and I get a lot of mileage out of that especially when I'm playing somewhere and, and I'm and I'm you know just trying to fit in with what's happening and not do a solo per se so if I'm just That might be a whole thing. But then maybe here's the other thing. that just fits in nicely it's sort of um it's 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 not changing what's happening but it's just kind of sitting right there in the middle not getting in the way i would try to keep that underneath the vocal and not interrupt what the vocal is doing but it's a nice little way to create an instant theme that just kind of sits nicely with everything else if this is uh helpful to you and this is the kind of thing you like just say hey more of these kind of intervallic uh adventures and we'll do it. I appreciate you all so much. You guys are guiding this. And I'm just doing my best to respond in a way that's helpful and encouraging. Because encouragement is what we need, folks. I appreciate you. Y'all have a great rest of your day.